Okay, so this demo is about the cathode ray tube and the discovery of the electrons. Uh, what we have in front of us is a cathode ray. It's on and we can see that there's a straight line being produced and this is being done by uh, putting electricity through a vacuum tube which has gas in it. The gas that's inside of it should be argon since it has a greenish hue. Okay. First thing that we observe we observe that the line is straight. It looks like a line of light. However, is this light? That is the question that we are actually going to see. We are going to be comparing this cathode ray and the beam of light that's coming out of this cathode ray with a laser. Now, lasers, we don't actually see them permanently. We actually have to put in a barrier so we can actually see the laser. And this is where I'm going to be showing this a bit later. So let's start off. Cathode ray tube. We can see the line, we can see it inside the tube. We can see that it does not go any further than the glass bottle in which it is encased. Now, do we see this with the laser? I turn on the laser and make it show. The laser is actually permanently there and it keeps going on and on until it actually hits an, an object. So, laser can only be visible if you put powder, if you put anything in it, and when it actually hits an object, that's when it stops. But the laser, if it does not hit anything, it keeps going on forever. Both, as we can see, lines are straight. They are absolutely straight. There's no curvature in those, both of the lines, in either the laser or the cathode ray. So this is both a similarity. So they're both straight. They both look like light. But one is encapsulated in a bottle, and one goes on forever. OK, next test. If we were to introduce a magnet to the cathode ray. What would happen? So, I'm going to be using a magnet here. And if I'm bringing the magnet close to the cathode ray, you can actually see the cathode ray bending and moving. You can make the cathode ray move, move, move. You can see it everywhere. All right. And all the way down to make it disappear, make it longer. Okay. So with both poles of the magnet, I can actually make the cathode ray light move. Now, do we see this with the laser? Let's try it. So, you can now see the laser right here. See the line of the laser? And I'm placing the magnet around it. Even though the magnet is right there, the laser does not change the angle of the of its light. Okay, so it's still a straight line, it does not get affected by the magnet. Okay, so we have a big difference right here. Next, next thing we're going to be doing is a test that I can't actually do on the laser, but we can actually see if there's something that's happening with the cathode ray. And this is one of the tests that JJ Thompson actually did to see if this would actually make a difference on the cathode ray, on the beam of light in the cathode ray. So, we have the cathode ray, and to produce the beam of light, it's an electricity, and this electricity uh, it, it excites something in there, and there's two pl metal plates. Those metal plates, when I'm going to turn on the other machine, is going to create a magnetic field in this, and the magnetic field, let's see if it actually is going to affect this beam of light. So, again, I'll turn it on. Hopefully, we'll be able to see that it's making the line of light, which is the cathode, which is the cathode ray of light, move towards one of the two plates. Well, the plate that I'm actually moving towards is the plate that I actually has a positive current. Let's switch them up. So now I'm going to have the upper plate being 
positive, while the lower plate is going to be negative. Let's see what happens. So the upper plate now is positive. Let's try to see this again. And again. So, the beam of light coming in the cathode ray is also being affected by the plates, the positive plates. So it's going towards the positive plate. And therefore, J.J. Thompson said, hmm, well, what's attracted to positive? Something that's negative. And therefore, that's where he actually started thinking about the negative parts of the atom that could actually be inside here. Now, there are other tests that J.J. Thompson actually did with the propeller and other uh, other ones that were actually pretty cool, which I cannot perform here, but I will be putting links uh, on the website about the other tests using a propeller that you can actually use. Thank you.